Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I want to show you how to set up a command handler using a library called DJS Commander. This is a library that I created, which allows you to set up a command and event handler with a lot of flexibility. It also supports subcommands, which I know a lot of you guys are looking for within a command handler. I'll first go over how to set up the command handler, then we'll set up some commands, create some event functions, and finally, I'll show you how to add validations for your commands. In addition to this video, I'll also link the documentation down below. Now before we start, I want to make sure you have the basic project structure down. This means you'll need to have a Discord bot account already created and you must have your token stored somewhere safe. This code is a basic structure of a Discord bot using the Discord.js library and all it's doing is logging to the console that the bot is online. If you guys don't know how to set up a basic Discord.js project like this, I'll have a video linked down below which covers how to get started with Discord.js. With our Discord bot now set up, we can go ahead and install the DJS commander library. To do that, I'm going to open up my terminal and type npm install djs commander. Hit enter and it should install in no time. Once it is installed, head over to your main file and import djs commander. From this library, we're only going to import the command handler class. Now let's open up the documentation and see how we can set up this library. So to start out, we need to instantiate a new command handler class and pass in an object. So let's go ahead and do that. Right before our ready event listener, I'm going to type new command handler and pass in an empty object. This tells DJS commander that we're using this library to handle something. We haven't defined what we want to handle yet, but we'll get there in just a moment. Now let's see what this object takes in. So hit control plus space and you'll get some properties that you can use. The first is client, which as you can see is required because it has no question mark. The rest have question marks, which means they're optional and you can individually define them based on what you want to handle. So let's start by setting client to the client that we defined using Discord JS. However, since they both have the same names, we can completely remove the value and it'll work the exact same way as before. Now let's save the file and open up the terminal and type node index.js. This should console log that our bot is online because we have an event listener for that. However, it doesn't actually do anything else. That's because we haven't actually configured it to handle anything. So let's say we want to handle our commands using this library. I'll first create a folder where I want all my commands to be. So I'm going to create one and call it commands. However, DJS commander doesn't know this folder exists. So inside our command handler object, right after client, I'll add another property called commands path. Setting this property tells DJS commander that we want to handle commands using this library. Now our commands path is going to be the path to this commands folder. But to use that, we have to import another library called path. So I'm going to say const path require path at the top of my file. And we're going to set commands path to path dot join underscore underscore darname. And the second argument is going to be the name of the folder, which in this case is commands in all lowercase. In here, we're basically telling command handler to use the commands folder to handle any command files. Now, one more property that I'd like to add to this object before setting up our commands is called test server. This takes in the ID of the server you're using to test your bot. This is important if your bot is in development because not setting this will register your commands globally. And if you know anything about Discord bot development, you should know that registering your slash commands globally can take some time and is generally not recommended during development. So I'm going to head over to my Discord server and I'm going to go ahead and copy my development server ID. Back in VS Code, I'm going to paste it over here as a string. And now we're ready to create our first command file. So save your index.js file and we can now create a new file inside our commands folder. I'm going to call this ping.js. However, feel free to call the command file whatever you want as this doesn't have any effect on the overall command structure. Now I'll open up the documentation again, but under the creating command section. Over here it says your command file is expected to export an object by default that looks something like this. 
this object will define the structure of your command and it will hold the function which is called every time that your command is ran. So in my code, I'll start by saying module.exports and set it to an object. I first want to define the structure of the command. So stuff like the name, description, and any possible options. To do that, I have to set a property called data and set it equal to either an object or a slash command builder. If you guys are new to Discord.js in general, you can use the slash command builder class from the Discord.js library to help you create your command structure. However, if you guys already know what the overall structure of a command looks like, you can directly set that to the data property. I'm going to use a slash command builder, so I'm going to go ahead and import that from Discord.js. Now I'll set data to a new instance of the slash command builder class. And the first method I'll chain onto this is called set name. Inside this, I'll pass in the name of the command, which is ping. Then I'll chain another method, which is called set description. And I'll set this to what I want the description of the command to be. In this case, it's just replies with pong. This seems just enough for the command structure. So let's move on to creating a function for what happens when this command is executed. So inside the object that we're exporting, go ahead and add another property called run. And this will be a function. This run function has an object as the parameter. And from this object, we have access to a bunch of properties as shown in the documentation. However, we only need the interaction object right now. So back in our code, I'm going to destructure interaction and inside the run function, I can use this interaction object to reply to the command using interaction dot reply. And I'm going to reply with pong. Now we can save this file and test it out. So open up your terminal and type node index.js. Now we'll see another message in the console saying registered command ping. This means we can go over to Discord and try this command out. I'll type slash ping and run this command. Now we get a reply to our slash command interaction, which says pong. Now that we've seen how we can set up a command, we can look at how to create functions for specific events. Let's look at the event listener in our main file, which console logs that the bot is online. The event name is ready in all lowercase and it's executing some code. We can better organize this by putting it in its own file. So let's create a new folder in the root directory and call it events. However, as with our commands, we have to tell DJS commando where it can find our events folder. So back in the command handler object, we can pass in a new property called events path. And we're going to set this to path dot join underscore underscore their name. And we can set the second argument to events, which is the name of the folder, which is going to handle our events. Okay, so we've told DJS commander where to find the event functions, but how do we tell it what functions belong to what events? Well, inside this events folder, we can create another folder, which will have the exact same name as the event name. In this case, the event name is ready. So let's call this folder ready. Now we can create our files however we want to. And matter of fact, you can nest your files into as many folders as you want. For now, I'll create a file called console-log.js because that's what this file will do. It'll console log that the bot is ready. Okay, so how do we structure our event file? Well, in the documentation, it says we need to export a function by default. So let's do that in our code. I'm going to say module.exports and set it to an arrow function. This function actually has a few parameters. The first is the argument itself that we receive when the event is triggered. So in a message create event, it's the message object. In the interaction create event, it's the interaction object. And in the ready event, it's the client object. So we can name our first parameter client. And to be honest, that's really all we need to log to the console. However, you can check the other parameters in the documentation with more detail down here. So inside our function, I'm going to go ahead and console log client.user.tag is ready and save this file. Now, of course, because we have defined our code over here inside our index.js file, we can go ahead and completely remove this event listener and save our file. Now let's go ahead and test our bot. So I'm going to open up my terminal again and restart the bots. This time we don't see the message saying that the command was registered because it already exists on Discord. However, we do see that our console log message was printed to the console with our bots tag. This means our event function is working perfectly fine. 
I do recommend you check out the documentation, however, as I cannot cover every single aspect of this command handler. I now want to set up some validation functions. Validation functions are basically functions that are called before the commands run function is called. They're like middlewares which intercept a command's request and run some validation to decide whether or not the command should be executed. Just like we set up our commands and events path, we can do the same for our validations. So let's define a property called validations path and set it to path.join underscore underscore their name and validations because that's what I'm going to call my folder. Let's save this file and now let's create a folder in the root directory called validations. Okay, so before we set up our validation function, I want to add a new property to our ping command, which I want access to inside the validation function. Let's say this ping command is for developers only, and we don't want anybody else to be able to run this command. Well, let's create a property called dev only and set it to true. Of course, DJS commander doesn't know that you want this command to be developer only. So we're going to write the logic for that inside a validation function. Inside the validations folder, I'm going to create a new file called dev only.js. However, you can feel free to call this whatever you want. In the documentation, you can see just like events, we're exporting a function by default. This function gives us access to a bunch of properties. So let's export a function from this file using module.exports. Now we only really need access to the first two parameters, which is interaction and the command object. Since you're not destructuring this, you can call them whatever you want. I'm just going to call it interaction and command object like this. Now, in this case, the command object will give us access to the entire command object that was exported from this file. This means we also have access to the dev only property that was exported from this object. So let's use it inside our validation function. In here, I'm going to say if command object dot dev only. In this case, we can create another if statement and check if the interaction member ID does not match a specific user ID. If it does not match, then we can reply to this interaction by saying interaction dot reply. And we can say something like this command is for developers only. Okay, so we replied to the interaction and told the user they can't run the command. However, the command will still be executed because we haven't told DJS commander that we don't want the command as well as any other validations to be executed. In the documentation, you can see if you return a truthy value, then only it will stop the execution completely. So just keep that in mind. Inside this function, right after replying to this interaction, I'll add return true and save this file. Let's restart the bot and I'll head back to Discord to test this command. If I run slash ping, I'll get a reply saying this command is for developers only and that's because my user ID does not match the ID that I provided over here. Validations are really powerful and you can use them to implement features such as cooldowns, paid commands, just to name a few. In the next video, I'll be covering how to create and handle subcommands with this library. So make sure you guys are subscribed for that. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.